Oh, all right, Mom. Didn't scare you, did I, Mom? Full of tricks. Just like your father was, ain't you? Hug! I'll teach you! To fight me! Ow! Well, Mom, you haven't lost your punch, have you? Well, you better run along. I've got a lot of work to do. Mom! Jimmy. Oh, Mom, answer me. Mom! 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 Oh, Mother! Oh, Mother! Son, who are you looking for? The Clarks. Clark? Well, my name's Clark. You Uncle Henry? Uncle Henry? Yeah. Are, are you Lucy's boy? Yes, sir. I'm Jimmy. Well, that's fine. How'd you get so far away from home? It's in the letter. Go on in. How's your mother? She's dead. What? Lucy's dead? It's all right, boy. Sit down. I'll go tell your Aunt Emmy. No, I mean, don't make it harder for the boy. Oh, my finish. But Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kelly's our boarder. Hi, Accountus. <laughs> well, I knew your dark past would catch up on you someday. <laughs> so, Mr. Kelly, this is my nephew. Jimmy Mason. Oh, hello, Jimmy. Glad to see you. Say, if I knew you were going to be here for dinner, I'd have stopped at the City Hall Square and shot a buffalo or an alderman or something. Say, I won't be here to dinner tonight. No, I'm stepping out. With who? His Honor, the Mayor. That's a break for you, Jimmy. You can have my spinach. Well, over the river and skip the gutter. Be seeing you, folks. Be seeing you. Sleep on the couch. I suppose you're awful tired after riding around all day. Yes, ma'am. Hiya, Peggy. Say, honey, you look gorgeous. Say, I've been to a conference. I've been waiting for you for a conference. Conference. Let me tell you, this can't last forever. Sorry. You expect me to marry you. Listen, honey, when we're married... If we're married, 
And I'm not at all sure that I want to marry a man who keeps me waiting See, around look. like this. Look. Frank Gephardt, editor of the Morning Times. Great guy, Frank. You know him intimately, no doubt. So why we're like this? Hiya, Frank. How do you do? How are you? Do I know that man I just spoke to? No, Mr. Gibhart. Huh. What's his idea in calling me Frank? Well, you may know him like self speaking to you. Oh, that's nothing, honey. He's so nearsighted many of the time he passes up his own mother. Listen, babe, I know a new spaghetti joint you're going to be crazy about. Come on, honey, we'll step right in the car and I'll drive you right down the chair. Be sorry I'm late, baby, but get right in the car and we'll be right there. I've always wanted a boy around the house. Outside of you, of course. First thing tomorrow, I'll take him around to school. No, no, I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to be late for... You haven't lost your job again. This morning. What are we going to do now? With another mouth to feed? We all pull through before, haven't we? Maybe I'll get a better job. Tell you what I'll do, I'll, I'll run down and get a newspaper now and look through the wall ads. Don't worry, honey. Everything will be all right. Watch, Jimmy. Watch closely this time. Oh, it's the music in my soul, Jimmy. I, I'm so full of it, I leak. When I come in the door, Rudy Valley goes right out the window. Do you know Rudy? Do I know Rudy Valley? Do I know him? The megaphone was my idea. Well, I gotta be going. Hey, uh, Jimmy, there's a dollar. That'll help me open a couple of banks. Thanks, Mr. Kelly. Mr. Kelly. Yeah. Could I talk to you for a moment? Sure. Grab your hat and make it snap. And Emma, I'm going to walk down the street with Mr. Kelly. Oh, okay. Well, what's on your mind, Jimmy? Well, if you see, Mr. Kelly, it's like this. Yeah. Hi, Red. How's the boy? Hello, Red Green, the football player. Was that Red Green? Uh. Hi, Carl. Hi, boys. Okay, boy. What were you saying, Jim? Well, you know Uncle Henry and Aunt Emma. Hey, right? Kelly. Yeah? Hey, yo. Well, go ahead, Jimmy. What were you going to tell me? Well, they've been up there. Hi, tonight, Kel. Hi, Commissioner. I guess you know nearly everybody, Mr. Kelly. Well, I'll tell you, me, you see, I ain't got a lot of connections. That's just the reason I wanted to talk to you. Oh, I you see. Well, well, well. Well, Jimmy, here's one for the book. Remember we went to that fortune teller this afternoon? Remember? Uh, yeah. Oh, did you? And he said we'd be walking down the street just like this. Remember, Jimmy? Yeah. And he said we'd run into the most beautiful girl in all the world. Oh, he was right up to that point, wasn't he? Yeah. And he said, uh, well, he said a lot of things that happened. Remember? Yeah, a lot of things. For instance. Well, let's see. For instance, he said, uh, he said, uh, well, he said I'd ask her to go dancing. Remember? Yeah. Did he say where? I don't know. Did he say where, Jim? Sure he did. He said we'd go to the Rosalind Dance Palace. Oh, that was the place. All right. 
What? Oh, I get it. I catch on. You're the girl he was talking about all the time. Who is this person? What? This is Mr. Uh... Peggy. I want you to meet a pal of mine, Jimmy Mason. <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. <laughs> Oh, you were only kidding. You knew her all the time. <laughs> know her? Say, I've known her since she was that big. <laughs> Come on in, Harley. I'll take him, Peggy. Come on, Jimmy. <laughs> Sit down, Jimmy. Thanks. Turn on the radio. Sure. Not bad, eh, Jimmy? Say, she's a swell girl. Hey, you want to read the story in here by Earth Cobb? Good guy, Earth. You know him, too? Oh, sure, we're like that. See, I never showed you this trick, did I, Jimmy? I don't think so. Oh, no, I know I did. Watch it very closely. Pete, where do you see this one? Mm -hmm. They like that, Jim. That's marvelous, Mr. Kelly. So, Jimmy, weren't you trying to tell me something? Oh, that. I was... Why, Jimmy, how nice. Getting up, I mean. Well, they always do it for movies. Take Mr. Kelly to the movies sometime, won't you, Jimmy? Oh, I'd have gotten up if it hadn't been for that sore knee of mine. Oh, well, if you've got a sore knee, you can't dance. What do you think of a man who asks a girl to go dancing and then has a sore knee? Does your mother let you associate with people like that? She died last week. Oh, Jimmy. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have. Oh, that's all right. Got a boy, Jimmy. The old chin up all the time. Mom would have liked you. Mr. Kelly, too. Jimmy, yes, I want you to promise me something. Yes, ma'am. Anytime you feel lonesome, will you come and see me? Could I? Anytime you want to. Sure, thanks. I sure will. Hey, Jim. When you get through cutting me out with my girl, how about going back to your aunt and uncle? Hello? Oh? I can't understand you. Oh, I guess it's for you. Hello. 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 I called up to tell you I've got everything under control. Everything is exactly as if you were right here. Right here. What? Hello. Say, what's the matter with you? You're... Hello. Hello. Sorry, baby, but that was important. I'll be back as soon as I can, and if I can't make it, why, I'll phone. Never mind. I'll know if you're coming. Yeah, how do you know? I'll call up that fortune teller. Oh. <laughs> All right, so long, darling. Say, I guess I'd better be going, too. Just thought of something. It's getting late. And... Well, good night. Good night, Jimmy. Remember you're coming to see me again. Well, good night. I had a very good time. Hello. Why don't you answer, Kelly? What's the matter? At it again, huh? Well, you're through. Get out. Oh, oh, Kelly, you wouldn't talk to an old pal that way. Get out. Sorry for this tomorrow. When you sober up. <laughs> oh, I 
found you. Geez, ain't you talented? You don't mind, do you? Well, was you see, with Uncle Henry getting laid off and me coming unexpected the way I did, it's kind of hard on them. And I thought, well, knowing everyone the way you do it, you could help me get a job. Well, maybe I can. I don't know. Maybe I can. I'd like to work for you, Mr. Kelly. Yeah, you would. Well, you'll be here the first thing in the morning. Say, it's getting kind of late. You better run along, haven't you? Thanks, Mr. Kelly. Good night. So long. Oh. Yeah. Oh, three quarts of white? Okay, I'll bring them right over. Yeah. That's all. Of course, it's none of my business, but I'm sure they are bootleggers. I've done my duty, and I expect you to do yours. Hi, Commissioner. Hello, kid. Listen, Jimmy, this is what I want you to do. You see, I'm in and out of this place all day long. All I want you to do is answer the phone. If somebody calls, tell them I'm out, but get their number. You can do that? Sure I can. Here's another thing. I do all my business over that phone. That door is supposed to stay locked all the time. They know you don't know who owns the place. You don't know where you live, because I live there too. You don't even know my name. Yes, but why, Mr. Kelly? Well, you see, Jimmy, it's like this. I got a lot of big connections. You know that, don't you? Yes, sir. Well, you see, you see a man in my position, he's liable to have a lot of enemies, and you never know what they might try to do. Sure. So if anything goes wrong, no matter what it is, you get in touch with me on the quiet. But be sure it's on the quiet. And you don't know me at all. Oh, I get it. <laughs> That's the stuff. And remember, Jimmy, Kelly's your friend. A guy that'll always stand behind you. And I'll do the same for you, too. K.O., Jimmy. K.O. Now, shove it off. Oh, and Jimmy. Yes, sir? Get a load of this. I'm paying you 25 bucks a week. Whoopee! K.O. K.O.
say. I mean, you been here before? So you're taking it pretty easy for a first timer. Nothing's gonna happen to me. What do you mean, nothing's gonna happen? It's happening. Yeah, but I got a friend with connections. And he'll walk in here any minute. Burton. Edward Burton. Relatives and witnesses, come this way. Mason, James Mason. Say, that friend of yours better get his connections working. How old are you, James? Fifteen. Almost. Hmm. Ever been in trouble before? No, sir. Where do you live? No place in particular. Parents dead? Yes, sir. Haven't you any relatives in this town? Someone that we ought to notify about this? No, sir. No relatives anywhere. Hmm. Now, James, obviously you wouldn't have found yourself in this trouble if you hadn't been led astray by someone older and, and more responsible, would you? Would you? We want to give you every chance to cooperate with us. Now, it isn't you, but the man who hired you that we want to reach. And your failure to expose him is really a more serious offense than the other charges against you. Now, come. Who was he? Who? Nobody. Very well, then. Right? You leave me no alternative. I'm sorry to have to do this. But you'll spend the next three years at the State Industrial School for Boys. Being numbered, sir. You want to come out and give him a speech? Oh, I suppose so. How many of them are there? Eleven and two repeaters. Two repeaters. Always the repeaters. James Mason? Yes, sir. One three one four four. That's all. 
Attention. Mr. Thompson has something to say to you boys. <coughs> boys, you are here to be made into good citizens. I trust that you'll take advantage of this opportunity. You'll be taught a trade at which you can earn an honest living when you are released. Obey the rules and you can profit by this experience. Disobey them and you will be punished. In other words, you will get out of this institution exactly what you put into it. That's all. That's all. All right, you. Three one seven two, lower bed. There's yours, one three one four four, upper deck. First thing you do, get in your jacket. One three nine seven four, upper. One four six seven one, lower. One five six eight two, upper. Where'd you come from? I got the bed up above. All right, then get your things and scram up where you belong. Well, I just thought I'd undress down here. Oh, yeah? Say. Hey, what's going on here? What's all this rubbish about? Oh, it fell. Now stay on your feet and get out of those clothes. Okay, big boy. You can sit down here anytime you want to. Hey, yo. How long you in for? Did they let you write letters from here? Sure, three a month. Why? Now, I won't be here long. Oh, but you gotta be careful. They read everything you write. What was that? Did the super give you the welcome speech when you first came in? Yeah. Well, that's some kid getting his for and by his experience. Hmm. What's it like up here, anyhow? Oh, the food's terrible, but you can get used to it. And they make you sweat like a dog in the brickyard. Brickyard? Yeah. That's the way they support this place. They haven't got enough money to run it, so they make us kids work for it. How do they treat you? Well, some of the guards are okay, and some of them are plenty tough. But they lay off me. I got a break. Yeah? How? The old pump. It ain't no good. The heart, I mean. I'm lucky. Yeah, I guess you are. I didn't think you brought me down here to listen to my charming conversation. Charlie, don't let what I've said give you the impression it has anything to do with our friendship. I'm not asking you to do a thing you don't want to do. No, you're only asking me to sacrifice my job to become the goat for a reform movement. That's not the idea at all. What I want you to do is to be a man. You know what conditions in the school are now. You know how badly you need the money from this bond issue to correct them. And I know you feel the way I do. You'd like to see things improve. You'd like to see these kids given a chance, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Now, I can bring about these changes, but only by arousing public interest, by printing the truth. Now, listen, Charlie, this is something that's got to be done. I can't do it. I'm not asking you to do it. Now on Thursday, I'll appear at the school unexpectedly. With a pass. You don't know anything about it, how I got it. 
All I'm asking is that you let me see with my own eyes conditions as they really are. Not the Sunday school act you put on for visitors. Now, will you do this, Charlie? I've got to be going, Frank. Well, Frank, I'll see you Thursday. Thanks, Charlie. now. That's what all us old timers do. Well, supposing I don't catch them. Oh, you'll just mash a finger. What was that all? Sure. What do you carry? You got ten of them. I caught them. Okay, big boy. What, again? Sure. You got to get used to it. Yes, that's all. Well, I'll be seeing you in a couple of minutes. Oh, where are you going? To get more bricks. More bricks? Sure, you're just warming up. Boy, they sure make you work in this place. Yeah. Say, ain't you the guy with the connections? Yeah, what of it? I thought your friend was going to get you out of this. Well, he isn't. It's none of your business. Say, do you want me to show you how to pile up those bricks so it'll be easy on you? All right. Hey, Jack, here's a new kid. Let's show him how to pile up the bricks. New kid, huh? Yeah. This is going to be swell for your muscles, too. Pretty strong, all right. Yeah. You got to see me when I first did this. Oh. your influential friend get you out of this. Hey, what's the big idea? Who did that? I did it. Oh, you can't do that to him. He's my pal. Now, just for this monkey business, you'll get no recreation hour. Now, hot going. Come on there, you. What's the good of my standing over our stove half the day if you don't eat something? I'm not hungry. I don't see what Jimmy could have done. But Mr. Kelly thought... Mr. It. Kelly. And while he thought and we sat here, maybe we could have done something. No, I mean, Mr. Kelly did everything he could. He used all of his influence and he couldn't do nothing. What could we have done? At least we can go up to the school and see him as soon as Mr. Kelly gets us that pass. Hiya, baby, baby, baby. Oh, stop it. What's the matter with well, you? Well, I just washed my hands and I can't do a thing with them. 
Say, get a pipe of that new backdrop, will you? Gee, I bet you had to fight the women off every step of the way. No, I fixed that. I got a police guard. Have you heard from Jimmy? No, not a word. Oh, I guess he's gone for good. You know, I can't get that poor kid off my mind. How could a boy just disappear? I don't know. I can't figure it. Haven't I tried everything? Police, hospitals, sheriff's office? Well, I guess he just beat us. I know. I was just wondering just if... just like I told you, sweetheart. He perhaps got tired of the city and homesick for the old town and just blew. You know how kids are. They don't think. Say... How's for you getting under that derby of yours? We got a lot of staying up to do tonight. Just a minute. What a heel you are, Kelly. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah? How you coming? All right, but gosh, it's hard writing in the dark. Hope Mr. Kelly will be able to read it. Say, Shorty. Yeah? I don't see how this will ever get to me if I don't sign it or address it. I slip to this guy in the hospital and tell him the address. Then he writes it on the envelope when he gets it outside. Say, Shorty. Yeah? How do you spell terrible? Oh, never mind how you spell it. Just write it. I'm coming to the part about getting you out, too. We're gonna stick together. Okay, big boy. What's the matter with you? I swallowed a couple of peas. You're lucky to get peas. What about it? Oh, I mean in print shop, tight. Did it bother you any? No, but I didn't think it would be good for me to keep on working. Well, work won't hurt you. There was only one thing to fix you up. Uh, I'm beginning to feel fine. The water's over there. Next. I keep on getting them dizzy spells. Well, you're the kid that got the bump on the head. Yeah, in the brickyard. Well, you'll have to wait till Tuesday when the doctor comes up. But here's some aspirin. Next. Next. Hey, you. You're next. Well, what's the matter now? Well, I thought maybe you could give me some of that medicine the doctor gives me. Oh, well, I don't feel so awful bad now. I think maybe I could come back when the doctor's here. Come here. Unbutton your coat. Come on. Let's have it. Well, your writing is nothing like this. Now, who wrote that? I did. It looks like that. You see, I wrote it in the dark. Now, listen. You've been here long enough to know it's a serious offense to try to sneak a letter out, especially one that criticizes the school. Now, you tell me who wrote this, and I'll go easy on you. If you don't, if you don't, I'm going to give you solitary. 
I did it, I tell you. All right, have it your own way. You wrote it, so you get six days in solitary confinement. You couldn't put me in solitary. I, then I, tell me who wrote this letter. All right, take him away. Come on. You got 13144 here? Over there. One three one four four? One three one four four? Yes, sir. How would you like to be a monitor? Oh, I don't know. We need more monitors, and you've been recommended. If I were you, I'd take it. Get better food, better sleeping quarters. Special privileges. Of course, you've got your responsibilities. I guess so. Well, come on. Shorty. How should I know? You supposed to relieve me? Yes, sir. Those on the mourner's bench have got two hours more to go. You've got to see that they keep their eyes on that line every minute of it. Those on the chalk line can loosen up 45 minutes more. There you are. You're the new monitor, ain't you? Yes, sir. How do you do, Mr. Gebhardt? 
How do you do? I'm sorry to have to tell you that Mr. Thompson won't be able to take you through the school personally. However, he's instructed me to see that you go wherever you want it. I see. Now, what would you like to see first? Oh, it doesn't matter. Now, this is our correction room. The boys are made to study during a recreation period. you use the white line for? That? Well, occasionally a disobedient boy is made to stand with his toes to that line while he studies. These are our punishment cells. Is there anyone in them? Why, no. We only use these in case of emergency. More comfortable than I expected. Get, get back till I call you. Now, would you like to see the dormitories? No, thanks. I think not. Well, Charlie, I have seen your Sunday school. So you lost your nerve. Double crossed me. What was the matter before? Never mind. Number five. Yeah, buddy. Hey, wake up. Shorty! Shorty, what's the matter? Guard! Guard! Shorty, something's happened to him. He's just lying here. Get someone quick! Hey, get water. I'll be back right away. Mom. It's me, don't you know me? Gee, Mom, Jimmy's going to be disappointed when Mr. Kelly doesn't get that letter. Oh, stop talking like that, Shorty. Of course, it's different with him. Come on, listen to me. Listen. Jimmy, what's the matter? Had a boy, Shorty. Now you're talking. How'd you get here, Jimmy? I was bringing you supper. You were just... Oh, gee. Gee, that's great. I thought maybe they got you, too. Got me? What for? Is that why you're in here? Did they find that letter? Yeah. Only, I wasn't gonna tell you. Shorty, you're doing this for me. It's my fault. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to tell him I wrote it. And you can get out. But that won't do any good. They'll never let me off. Kind of, I wouldn't tell him who wrote it. Oh, I'll make him let you off. I'll tell him myself. Oh, don't do that, Jimmy. That won't help any. They'll just put you in solitary, too. I'll be all right. The doc can fix me up. Oh, fix you up. Well, you told me yourself. They could never fix you up in this place. You need good doctors and hospitals and everything. Oh, I'll be all right. I know what I'll do. Oi, right, I'll get out. I'll get to Mr. Kelly. I'll tell him, oh, he'll get you out. Shorty. Shorty, do you, do you think you can stand it till I, till I get a chance? Is that all right? Uh, oh, okay, big boy. 
Shorty. Gee, it's great to be home, Mom. Shorty. It ain't nothing to die. Oh, you're not gonna die. You'll die? No. Pick him up, you mug. All right, you don't have to help me. I'll do it myself. You're darn tootin' you well. I'm not gonna let my dinner get cold. Get going. about it. Let her go. One, three, one, four, one, one, four, three. Here. One, three, one, four, four. One, three, one, four, four. I don't see what good it does you to read the same thing over and over again. No, he's just trying. I got a lot to do. I gotta get. Is Mr. Kelly home? He don't live here. Do you? Don't you know that? I don't care. I gotta get Mr. Kelly right away. Where is he? We don't know. But what good could he do? Oh, let him take him back again. Well, that long as I get shorty. Shorty. Yeah, I gotta get Mr. Kelly right away. Get my coat and a shirt. I think I know where I can yeah. find. Let me wipe your face off. Hold your head up, Jimmy. Hold your face. My goodness, but you're dirty. How in the world did you get all that over here? Jimmy! Mr. Kelly here. Better close the door. Why, Jimmy, where are you? Mr. Kelly. Well, well, well. How's the weather in China? Say, you ought to let your friends know when you duck out like that. You had us worried. I tried to let you know in the quiet like you told me, but after the cops got me, I didn't have a chance. Shorty tried to get a letter out of the reform school, but... Reform school? Say, they what? sent you to the reform school? Yeah, when I wouldn't tell them your name. What does this mean? Well, when the cops broke in and found all that liquor, of course I knew right away they were trying to get something on you, count of your connections. I didn't want to see about that. But there's something you've got to do, Mr. Kelly. Not for me, but for a kid that's still up there, Shorty. He's sick. Unless we get him out of there right away, I'm afraid he's going to die. That's why I ran away. Oh, will you do something, Mr. Kelly? Gee, Shorty's a swell kid. You'd be crazy about him. We've got to do something quick before they catch me and take me back. You're not going back. No, Jimmy. You're not going back. I'll get in touch with her. I... Now, wait a minute. Let me think. I got it. Frank Gebhardt of the Times. Just the man. I'll go right down and see... Gee, him. Mr. Kelly! Why don't you phone him? Oh, no, you can't settle a thing like this over the phone. Phone him and see if he's there. 
say, that's a good idea. Never mind. I know the number. Hello? Mr. Gebhardt, please. Hello? Uh, Mr. Kelly calling Mr. Gebhardt. Sure, he'll know. <clears throat> uh, uh, hello, Frank. This is Kelly. Kelly? What Kelly? Why, couldn't be better. How are you? Who is this? Say, Frank, I want to come right down and see you. Uh, listen, I got some real front page dope for you. Yeah, and that's state reform school stuff. Well, all right. Come down and see me. Uh, no. No, Frank, I can't come to dinner. Thanks. But I'll be right down. Uh, there's some... <clears throat> well, let's go. <clears throat> You're not doing him any good by not telling us where he went. You don't want him to get in any more trouble, do you? I tell you, we don't know where he went. He said he was going to see Mr. Kelly, a friend of his, who usually our boarder. Where does this man Kelly live? Well, we don't know, and Jimmy didn't either. He, he just, uh, uh, thought he could find, find... I guess they're on the up and up. I guess so. Now listen, if that kid comes back here tonight, you keep and call police headquarters. Yes, sir. Yes. Well, Emmy, don't you go well, Emma, and me. You know a guy named Kelly that used to live over there? Sure. Looking for him? Yeah. Will you come in, Mr. Kelly? Oh, Frank. What's your game? What's the idea of calling me Frank? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Kebbar. I've been reading your columns so long, I just got the feeling like I knew you. Uh-huh. You know, what I told you over the phone, the front page news, that's on the level. I know a kid who just escaped from the reform school. This kid? Yep. Your boy? Well, no, he's a pal of mine. What do you want out of it? Not a thing. Except that he don't go back up there. I can't promise that. All right, the deal's off. Now, wait. I can't say what I can do until I've heard the story. But I'll do what I can. He's outside now. Bring him in. Maxwell, bring your book. Herman, break down the front page. Yes? Yes, never mind about that now. Jimmy? This is Mr. Gebhardt. How are you, Jimmy? Sit down. Uh, take my chair. Jimmy, could you tell me how you got into the reform school and what happened there? Yes, sir. Take this, please. All right, tell me about it. Well, when I first came to live with Uncle Henry and Aunt Emma... Say, Joe, have you hauled Kelly, the girl and the kid, in the last hour? No. Have you seen anything of them? No, not me. They aren't. No, no. Who'd you haul that? Why, a young couple and a kid. And when I got to Mr. Kelly, told him how badly Shorty needs help, he brought me down here. I guess that's all. Just transcribe that as quickly as possible, Mr. Maxwell. Yes, sir. 
Yes? Telegraph desk just got a wire on the reform school, Mr. Gebhardt. Kid died up there this afternoon. They say it was a case of bad heart. We're getting pictures. All right. I'll call you back later. Jimmy, will you wait in the outer office? There's something I want to talk to Mr. Kelly about. Yes, sir. Mr. Gebhardt. Yes, Jimmy? You and Mr. Kelly will do everything you can to get Shorty out of there right away, will you? We'll do everything for him we possibly can. Thank you, sir. Everything we possibly can. Kelly, that phone call. Shorty just died. Oh, gee, that'll be tough on the kid. I can keep Jimmy from going back to the reform school, but I can't do it alone, Kelly. You've got to help me. What do you mean? Just this. I want a signed confession from you clearing the boy. What's the idea of getting me mixed up in this? The only way we can save him is by proving that he was ignorant of the nature of your business. And that means that you'll have to admit what it is and how you deceived the boy. I won't do it. You want that kid to go back up there? No, but I ain't going to Leavenworth and that's that. Hello, Jimmy. Hello. That's him. Come along. Call Mr. Gebhardt, quick. Mr. Gebhardt. Well, gentlemen? Now, this kid ran away from reform school, Mr. Gebhardt, and we're taking him back. Wait a minute, boys. I'm interested in this case. Will you sit down here for about five minutes? Jimmy won't run away. Will you, Jimmy? No, sir. How about it? Well, I guess... Thanks. Yes. Well, Jimmy will be starting back in five minutes. I can't do it. Oh, you can't do it. You made the kid believe you're the greatest guy on earth. And then you hid behind him to save your own skin. You let him go to reform school because he wouldn't squeal when you told him not to. And now when you've got a chance to be the man he thinks you are, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to let him down? What are you, Kelly? A man or a rat? You're a rat! Will you come in here a minute, Jimmy? Yes, sir. It'll be all right, boys. Jimmy, you've got to go back to the reform school. There's only one man in the world who can help you. And he won't. Who? What do you mean? Jimmy, you didn't know it. But the man you were working for was a bootlegger. The liquor in that place wasn't planted there. It belonged to him. And now he's too small. Too mean, too cowardly, to do for you what you did for him. Are you talking about Mr. Kelly? Yes. Listen, Mr. Gebhardt, he may have been a bootlegger. That may have been his liquor. But when you say he wouldn't do the same for me as I would for him, it's a, you, it's a lie. You're right, Jimmy. You're right. You see, uh, Frank's a great kidder. He's got to have his little joke. I didn't think he was kidding. Oh, sure he was, Jim. Get Peggy, will you? Let me. Well, kid, looks like I got to go away for a long time. To? to... Yeah. Yep. Oh, but after all, it's... It's no more than I got coming to me. But, gee, Mr. Kelly. Oh, now look at it this way, kid. We're pals, ain't we? Well, sure. Sure we are. 
And you took it on the chin, didn't you? Well, no, I'm going to take it on the chin. And what happens? Mr. Gebhardt gets a chance to clean up that reform school and do things for a lot of kids. That's the way to look at it, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's the way to look at it. And Shorty... Sure, that's it. Think of Shorty. Oh. oh, please don't, babe. How's it now, Shorty? Okay, big boy. 